Welcome back to Kingdom Tales. I'm Father Lee, and this summer we're reading the Kingdom Tales by David and Karen Maines. We're currently in the second book in the series. This is the Tales of the Resistance. In our last story, I talked about how important it is for us to be brave and choose to follow Jesus wherever Jesus is going. But when you hear somebody say something like, you need to be brave and follow Jesus, the first thing that you might think about is that there are lots of things in this world to be scared of. There's a secret. There's lots of things in this world that I'm scared of. That's just true. There's scary things all around us all the time. But do you know what Jesus says to us? He says, don't be afraid. He doesn't say that the things aren't scary, but he says that we're not supposed to be controlled by them, and we're not supposed to let them keep us away from following Jesus. That's what being brave means. It means following Jesus, even though things around us are scary. Not because we're big and strong and scary too, but because Jesus has given every single one of us the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit makes us brave. Our story today is the taxi resistance. Some people in Enchanted City said that taxis could get you wherever you needed to go, even in power outs. Some people said that the city taxi company was not afraid of burners or breakers or naysayers but no one said it very loudly. The sharp wind moaned through the flop hole where Hero tried to sleep. These lonely weeks in Enchanted City had been dreadful. He was hungry and cold and felt lost. Above all, though he was ashamed to admit it, he was afraid. No one would give him work and what little money he had was running low. He had no idea how to sight the king, and the ominous spell of the enchanter was weighing in his heart like lead. Hero longed for the daylight of Great Park, for mercy and caretaker, for the laughter of friends and the comforting sound of the watchkeepers crying, but the kingdom comes. He longed for home. Light spilled through the cracks in the rickety shelters of Moiroxen. The sentry cry of patrols disturbed the slumber of weary people. Sleep in the light, sleep in the light, they warned. But Hero couldn't sleep. Hero feared the wandering patrols. He knew an ugly scar on his cheek was evidence of branding, but he wouldn't sure this enchanter's mark would satisfy interrogators. Wouldn't a breaker demand proof of identity? some surer certificate of adoption than the note humming in his heart. Hero despaired. Where was the king? How was he to be found? And what part was Hero supposed to play in the restoration? Nay, 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 sounded the dread melody of the naysayers. Nothing can be done. Nothing will be done. Hero tried to hum a tune from the dance of the great celebration, but the melody was faint. He kept thinking, I'm only a lad after all. The enchanter's powerful and his league is mighty. He coughed. The stink of enchanted city always choked his lungs. Suddenly he heard the dreadful sound that all the people feared. Mbafa, 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 den. The pounding of the death drums. Another dragnet. He'd escaped one only yesterday and had been forced to find a different flop hole. Hunting orphans, the enchanter's men conducted daily raids in Moiroxen, waking citizens from their sleep. Hero could hear the drums and then the naysayers again, the singers who chanted tunes that smothered hope. He could hear the boot tromp of burners and breakers, the enchanter's secret police running up and down flimsy fire exits. Suddenly, cudgels were hammering on doors in his very building. He heard children crying. They come for me, he thought. What can I do? Where can I hide? Wham! The door to his flop hole banged open. Two burners rushed in, their pokers flaring. 
A ghastly breaker grabbed him from his mat. Identification, ordered one of the secret police. Hero was numb. What can I say? He turned to his meager pack of belongings and saw the handle of the hatchet caretaker had given him. Just a minute, he mumbled. Hero bent to grab the handle and then turned swiftly, swinging the hatchet in front of him. His heart leapt in terror as he waited for a mighty blow to crush his skull, but to his amazement, the lights of the burner's pokers glowed dimmer. Cautiously, slowly, all three backed toward the broken door. To the king, to my sovereign liege lord, to the one monarch of all, Hero cried. Power from the hatchet throbbed in his hand. His heart grew brave at his own shouting of the names. He lifted his tool and backed the burners and breakers step by step out of the hole and down the outside fire exit. In the daylight, from the top of the rickety stairs, he could see that a circle of frightened children had been rounded up on a corner. All were blindfolded so they couldn't see the light and thereby remember the look of day. Hero remembered when he had escaped from Enchanted City, a terrified orphan with death drums and burners in pursuit. He recalled how he had raced to safety with his little brother in his arms. If I can save one more child from the Enchanter, if I can keep one child from a life of bondage, if I can carry one child to mercy, my return to Enchanted City will have been worth it. Standing at the top of the fire exit, Hero raised his hatchet above his head. Anger flooded him, and he let forth a mighty shout, I am Hero, Ranger of Great Park. I'm a king's man. There was a moment of silence. The death drums paused. The chant of the naysayers ceased. The whole sleeping city seemed to listen to his shout. Din, din, din. The death drums paused and then began sounding another beat. Faster and faster, a battle beat. Hero realized more burners and breakers were gathering in striking formation. He had done a foolhardy thing. Even with hatchet in hand, he was only one against many. He was in the middle of the enchanter territory, with no fellow rangers to come to his aid. His only chance was in taking out his opponents with surprise. Rushing down the stairs, he swung into the battle tactic he learned in the War of Fire in Great Park. To the king! To the restoration! he cried. Holding the hatchet with both hands, he jumped into the middle of the band of captured orphans. Scatter! he shouted. Take off your blindfolds and run! With his weapon at arm's length, Hero began to whirl as the children scattered, climbing stairs, turning street corners, scurrying into holes. Round and round Hero whirled, cutting a circle of emptiness between himself and his would-be captors. The Enchanter's men were so intent on taking him prisoner, they let the children escape. For a moment, Hero felt a defiant gladness. Scar boy! Scarboy! The enchanter's evil eye had spotted him. The moment his old name was shouted, Hero began to freeze. His feet were leaden. The hatchet felt heavy. Closer and closer inched the burners and breakers. One of the breakers caught Hero's eye and held it with a stare and then lifted his ugly cudgel up over his head. From the opposite direction, two taxicabs came careening down the narrow alley, their horns blaring and their speed frightening. The enchanter's men scattered and the taxis stopped to screech within inches of stunned Hero. Need a ride, buddy? A burly arm grabbed Hero, pulled him roughly into the front seat. As Hero frantically yanked the door shut behind him, the cab blasted into reverse and squealed around another corner. Within seconds, a whole fleet of taxis raced out of alleys and side streets. They drove for a while in a straight line and then veered off in opposite directions. <coughs> Their horns blared in great commotion. And for a moment, Hero felt safe. No pursuer would know which cad had kidnapped him. But was he under arrest or under protection? 
Hero could just read the signs over the huge garage before the overhead door thudded shut behind him. City Taxi Company. There was a hustle as the driver detached from the power source. Hero's door was yanked open and he was pulled out. It was only then that he realized a small child had been huddled on the floor in the back and was being hastened away. Hey, bub. Big operator wants to see you in the terminal office. The cabbie jerked his head to the left and then drove off. A man in uniform motioned Hero toward a glassed-in office. The next thing he knew, his wrist was being clasped in the ranger's grasp. Well done, son. Most rangers infiltrate the enchanted city as subtly as possible. Whole, na whole town knows that you've arrived, not to mention the powers that be in the Dakota, but... Welcome to the Resistance. We're all King's men and women here, working for the Restoration. Hero's mouth dropped, and Big Operator smiled. Yes, sir. Dispatchers had themselves quite a job getting you out of that tight spot. It's not easy to move a taxi vanguard into position on a moment's notice. By the way, I think we picked up most of the orphans. That scattering tactic was pretty effective. The Resistance could use a man like you. Now... How would you like to see the rest of the operation? The two walked to the middle of the taxi terminal, a large underground cavern with a huge map of Enchanted City on one wall. Big Operator pointed to the section that was Moiroxen. Enchanter puts most of the heat here. People are poor and helpless, without wealth to barter for protection. As you know, the orphans are taken to the orphan keeper and then put to work in the underground or on street crews. Big Operator pointed to purple flags stuck all over the map. Sightings, he explained. King's been sighted all over the city. The Enchanter's nervous. What with that and power outs? Shortages don't bother the city's taxi company. No, we developed our own solar storage cells so we can hook up or detach. Never trust man-made power. But our informants say the Dakota's been a hot place full of fire flying. The terminal thrummed with the rumble of taxi engines, ignition starting, tires squealing, and doors banging. Big operator lifted his voice. We have taxis posted all over the city. These folks are dispatchers. He pointed to an electronic panel where busy people were wearing headsets monitoring instruments. Hero noticed one dispatcher who seemed a little, little bit more than a boy. They keep tabs on hot spots, send cabbies on rescue sorties, whisk orphans off to Great Park if at all possible, and monitor sightings. Suddenly, Hero remembered the cabbie who had taken him to the edge of the garbage heap when he escaped from Enchanted City so long ago. He had thought the driver shouted, To the king! Walking through a huge open door, Big Operator waved to a grease monkey, a woman wearing overalls. Hey, Mac. Here we had a little action this morning. Then to Hero, this is the garage. Maintenance crews overhauling taxis, keeping them in running condition, washing them down. The Enchanter has a fleet of fancy limousines, but I'll take a swift little resistance taxi in top-notch condition any day. Hero's mind would not stop whirling. He didn't know what question to ask first. But, but what about the en Enchanter? How do you get by with this in the, the middle of Enchanted City? Big Operator smiled, but it was a grim expression. He put his arm around the lad's shoulders. Make no mistake. Enchanter is evil and dangerous. Never forget it. The closer the restoration, the more sightings of the king, the more dangerous and desperate he'll become. Then his smile became almost cocky. But the truth is, the Enchanter only has power over those who fear him. Here in the taxi resistance, we are subjects of the king, and so we are not afraid. Hero looked straight ahead at a wall placard that read, Sighters are not afraid. Big operator studied this heroic troublemaker. Now, what are we going to do with you? 
You can't hear it in this underground terminal, but right now the death drums are beating out an all points description on you. In the city wakes, you're going to be a wanted man. I don't dare make you a cabbie. That scar's too obvious. Last week I needed a first rank dispatcher, but a new recruit arrived who seems to have an inborn instinct for operation. Big operator walked over to the dispatcher's panel and checked a few notes that had been collected on clipboards. Wait a minute, I think I have an idea. Hmm, a little risky, but you're not without courage. I need to get you out of the terminal in case of raids anyway. Stay right here. Hero stood by the dispatcher's board, still amazed by his rescue and by the turn of events. What kind of job would demand courage? He thought of the death drums beating out his description for the second time in his life. This unfortunate scar. He would have liked being a cabbie. Dispatchers efficiently took messages and gave commands. Zone 5, zero, oh, 2020 is in the ready and I can make a pickup steady. What command they brought to their job? They monitored the whole city and made crucial life-saving decisions. He would have liked to be a dispatcher working for the restoration. He watched the back of the boy, the new recruit, who appeared quick-minded, able, pausing to ask a question now and then. Leaning closer to the board, Hero thought, how exciting to receive word of a sighting. How could anyone be afraid who kept seeing the king? Without realizing it, Hero crowded the boy. The lad turned, looked up at him and said, watch it, you're stepping on my gown. That voice was familiar. Even the words had been spoken before. It was no boy at all. It was the princess Amanda as impertinent as ever. I thought the idea was to infiltrate quietly, to be ready when the king needed us, not to draw attention to the resistance by and making a royal nuisance of oneself. Hero was so glad to see her that he only laughed in amazement. What are you doing here? Same thing you're doing here, she retorted, working for the restoration, only I'm doing it a little more quietly. And with that, she turned back to the board. Amazed, Hero folded his arms, waiting for his assignment. He still wanted to ask a hundred questions, but the dispatchers were frantically busy getting orphans to safety, no doubt. He thought about his recent battle, the shouting of the names, and the fresh rush of courage and the swinging hatchet, and he felt good. Maybe he was a hero after all, though a foolhardy one. Not only had he rescued one child, he had rescued many. Yes, sir. That was certainly worth a trip to Enchanted City. Suddenly sure of himself, he stretched out his hand and knocked Amanda's cap to the floor. Then he yanked the braid that tumbled down her back. She yelped, turned towards him, and warned, You remember, I have perfect aim. All the dispatchers stopped their work to watch. Quietly indeed, Hero thought to himself. So Hero waited for his new assignment with fresh hope and renewed courage, not caring how dangerous the task. He was no longer alone, but surrounded by a great and adventurous company. The Taxi Resistance. True friends were near. In fact, he suspected that the kingdom was all around him, if he but cared to find it. <laughs>